Hello? Oh my god, did you hear? Oh, I'm itching to tell you something. Itching to tell you with Zoe Ryan. Today I'm itching to tell you about my story. I was 18 when I was officially diagnosed, but like many, my journey to diagnosis was not straightforward. When I was around two or three, I had this really aggressive red rash all down the sides of my thighs and across my groin area and the bottom of my bum. And at the time my parents were told that it was an extreme case of eczema, but it most likely actually was a type of psoriasis called inverse psoriasis. Inverse psoriasis generally appears where you sweat or where you have folds in the body. So under the arms, under the chest, along your groin area and it tends to have a red shiny appearance. It doesn't have that thick white layer that people usually associate with psoriasis, that flaky skin layer. And the reason for that being because it's generally where you sweat, so where there's moisture and it doesn't really have a chance to form that white layer. Obviously I was quite young at the time, so I don't remember an awful lot, but what I do remember is the heat that used to radiate off my skin. So anywhere that I had the red plaques, this mad heat used to come off it. And I remember you'd be lying in bed at night and the sheets would be sticking to it. And it'd be so itchy that I'd literally just spend the whole night clawing my skin off. I've been told that my parents used to let me just run around the house with no pants on to, you know, let the air at it and let it cool down. And my older sister to this day still refers to it as red rasher because my skin used to look like a raw piece of meat. She used to say that I was like a little baboon running around the house with my red bum. When I was about seven or eight years old, in between my toes and at the back of my toes started cracking open and the doctor said that it was athlete's foot. But, same as before, it probably was inverse psoriasis. It used to get so itchy that I would just scratch constantly in between my toes and wearing closed toe shoes and socks used to make it so much worse. I had to wear sandals all the time, yet again to let the air at it. Now the only problem there was that I went to a very traditional Catholic school and we had a very strict uniform. You know, you had to wear your black patent shoes. And my mammy had to actually write me a note for the teacher to say that I was allowed to wear my open-toed sandals uh, without my socks for medical reasons. Do you know, we actually found the pair of sandals that I used to wear to school up in the attic recently. And they were kind of like this peachy pink color. Now keep in mind, right, my uniform was actually like a dark green and red. <laughs> So speaking about standing out, um, as if I didn't stand out enough, I was always so much taller than all the other children. So I used to tower over them all, the boys and the girls. And of course, I'm a redhead. So as if I didn't stick out enough, of course, put the child with the green uniform in a pair of peach pink sandals. But anyways, I remember that year that I wasn't allowed to partake in the school sports day because I was wearing my sandals. I wasn't wearing my runners and it was deemed unsafe for me to partake wearing my sandals. The most sought after day of the year, you know, that everyone looked forward to was sports day. And like when you think about it, to ask a child to not participate in it or actually to tell them they're not allowed to participate in it because of something they couldn't control. You know, like it wasn't my choice to wear the sandals as opposed to a pair of runners. Of course, I would have been delighted to wear a normal pair of shoes or a pair of runners like all the other children. You know, as a child, you just want to, you don't want to stand out for any reason to be different. You want to blend in. So looking back now, I just think it was actually quite crazy that they did ask me not to participate in sports day because sports as well is like so good for your mental health and your physical health so you're thinking what was their logic there in not letting me take part just to think that i wasn't allowed to participate in a day that all the other children were going to be involved in just because of my footwear is just actually crazy you think that they would have wanted you to feel more included and not to isolate you out that's just what i remember most about that time like i wasn't really too bothered by it other than of course there was a couple of stairs because you were wearing sandals and everyone else was wearing shoes but I do always remember that year being asked not to participate in the sports day because I was wearing my sandals and not a pair of runners. The only thing that would clear that up was this green powder called Fuller's Earth 
and I remember that my parents used to have to ask people from the UK to get it for us because it wasn't available in Ireland at the time and would come in a little box and you'd use a Q-tip to scoop out the green powder and to put it in between your toes and it was the only thing that used to dry up that moisture in between your toes and when it was dry then it would clear up that redness and the itchiness. So yeah, I'd say probably after a year of doing that, it did clear up. And it's typical that when you're well, you forget what it's like to be unwell. So it's as if after me as a child, having that rash down my sides, you forget about it. And then when it came back in the form of what was called athlete's foot at the time, you were all consumed by that, but then it goes away, it clears up and you forget about it completely. Until of course it wears its ugly head years later. So when I was 12 years old, I started shaving under my arms. I had a swimming lessons in school and these little red dots, these kind of dry patches appeared underneath my arms and my armpits. And I didn't really think too much of it. Like I remember saying it to my mom and she said to me that it probably was just because I'd started shaving that it was like a little bit of irritation on the skin. Um, and I had to use the electric razors then as opposed to the blade razors because the electric razor wasn't as harsh on it. Because if you ran over those patches of dry skin with the razor, it used to cut it open. So the electric razor was better for that. So at the time I just thought that it was something normal that everybody used to get these patches. But now looking back and going, oh my God, that was really distinctively a patch of psoriasis. It's because I recognize psoriasis now that I can look back and say, that definitely was the start of my plaque psoriasis. Up until I was 18 years old, it's very possible that I actually was misdiagnosed with other conditions that were probably psoriasis. So the eczema could very well have been inverse psoriasis and then the athlete's foot could have been inverse psoriasis as well. And then it was really from the age of 17 that was the first sighting of my plaque psoriasis. And ever since I've just been living with plaque psoriasis. So yeah, I was 18 years old when I got my diagnosis that I had psoriasis, but I was in such disbelief, such denial. You know, the thought never entered my mind that this white dryness that appeared on my scalp one day when I was 17 um, was something that I would have to live with for the rest of my life um, and something that I really did struggle with for a long time, like years, was I couldn't understand how a couple of weeks ago or a couple of months ago my scalp was normal and that one day it just wasn't. And for a long time I struggled with the idea that it would never be normal again. I was absolutely devastated because I think as well, I had never heard of psoriasis. And like that's mainly because there's such a lack of awareness and understanding of the condition in Ireland. Like you don't see psoriasis in mainstream media. You don't see it, you don't, when you walk down the street, you don't see people with plaques of psoriasis on their body. And the reason being that people who have psoriasis, they tend to not talk about it. And as well as that, we tend to cover it up. We tend to hide the visual signs of it. So I had never heard the word psoriasis before at that stage. I'd never met anyone who had it. I'd never even seen it. And I wasn't told either. Like that day that I was given my diagnosis, she said to me, yes, you have a very severe case of psoriasis. And then straight away went on to tell me about the treatment regimes. She never actually explained to me what psoriasis was, why I had it. You know, I think that's such an important part of accepting your condition is understanding it. Because if you have a greater understanding of it, then you can treat it better and you can just live your life better with it. And back then, I, I was none the wiser of what psoriasis was from when I went up 
to the clinic and when I was leaving, going in the door and coming out the door, I was no better off. But at the same time, I didn't really want to know much about it, to be completely honest with you. Um, it was like having this condition was an inconvenience to me, an inconvenience I didn't want to know about. Um, I still had to sit my leave insert exams. I was very consumed by that. And then of course I went on then into college and I found that throughout my early 20s. So, you know, my leaving search year and all throughout my college years, you know, I tried to forget that I had psoriasis. It was like I was repressing it in the back of my mind. I was thinking, well, if I never talk about it, it's not real. You know, if I, if I don't talk about it and I don't allow myself to sit down and think about it, it's not happening. And that was definitely the completely wrong thing to do. I mean, as a result, I have an awful lot of repressed emotions and feelings towards psoriasis. And I had a very, very negative relationship with my condition for years. Because like that, I refused to believe it was happening. I would, you know, be up in college all week. And then at the weekend, I would come home and my mum would apply the treatment to my scalp because it was mainly isolated to my scalp back then. And it was very predominantly at the back of my scalp, down the back of my ears and my neck. So I couldn't see it. So I couldn't really apply the treatment effectively myself. So my mum used to do it at the weekend. I'd come home, I'd sit there for the hour, let her apply it, leave the treatment in for the hour, wash it out, and I wouldn't think about it again. But it always was niggling in the back of my mind, unknowns to me, that, you know, you'd make the decision not to tie your hair up. Because if you tied your hair up and there was people behind you, um, they'd be able to see the psoriasis. You know, I... I developed a lot of ways of disguising the fact I had psoriasis and I definitely didn't tell anybody about it. I didn't dare. I was too embarrassed and ashamed to speak to anybody about it and I didn't want anybody to know. And, you know, I st still do some days have a fear that if people know about the psoriasis that they won't see me in the same way. And that's because there's such a stigma around the condition in Ireland. There's a lack of understanding and knowledge about it. People don't understand it. How, like, how could you expect if someone doesn't understand something to accept it? And I was the same. For years, I didn't understand my condition and I didn't accept it. I was in such denial and disbelief that I had an incurable condition that for my master's thesis, I actually decided to do a piece on psoriasis and it was all about the fact that I hadn't found a cure in Western medicine. So I was going to try all these alternative medicines in the hope of finding a cure. So I embarked on this whole journey um, across the country where I tried out the most wacky and unusual alternative cures to psoriasis. But you know what? Filming Searching for a Cure was without a doubt one of the best things I have ever done. And it has been such an important part in my psoriasis journey. For a long time, I felt like my diagnosis was like being delivered a life sentence. I don't like not being in control um, and having control of situations or having a say in it. And I very much felt like I didn't have a say in psoriasis. Psoriasis can be a very cruel condition that will fight against you and all your efforts to treat it. And I just felt like I was fighting a losing battle all the time. And from doing searching for a cure, it just changed the way that I view my condition completely. I developed a greater understanding of it. And because of that, I was able to actually accept it. And I had such a more positive view of it. I used to think it was like a life sentence and that I was trapped and that nothing I did would ever work. But because I have a greater understanding of it, I know how to treat my psoriasis more effectively. and. I know how to live with it 
for so many years, I was fighting against my psoriasis. You know, I was willing it to go away. I wasn't listening to it at all. You know, there's certain things that they claim you should avoid, whether it be certain environmental conditions like heat or cold, or there's certain foods that could be triggers for your psoriasis. And I ignored all of those things for years. It's as if I actually was being nearly defiant against it. I was going, okay, well, I'm not meant to do this because my psoriasis doesn't like it, but I'm not going to listen to it. I'm not going to change my life for it. And that was such a bad attitude to have towards it. I've come to the realization that it's not about giving things up or compromise as much as it is about working with your condition. For so many years, I fought against my condition. You know, I was lashing on these treatments onto it saying, it's gonna work now, isn't it? And my condition was fighting back but I wasn't listening to it. I wasn't going, okay, I wonder why has that treatment not worked? Or I wonder why at certain times of the year, my psoriasis tends to get worse and at other times it tends to improve. I wasn't taking the time to listen to it and work with it. And the day that I came to the realization that this is a lifelong condition, it's not going anywhere. You and your condition have to co-exist together. You know, we both inhabit the same body, my and my condition. So you're going, well, look, we're stuck together. So we may as well work together to make this work for us. And ever since I started thinking that way, you know, the way I view my condition has completely changed. It's as if it's not this burden on me anymore. It's as if it's just something that I live with. And I think that that, that phrase, the dreaded phrase of, you'll just have to live with it. It really does depend what tone you say it in and what context you say it in. So many people who have psoriasis quote that their doctors would have said to them during maybe their initial diagnosis that you'll just have to live with it. Like that's not helpful. And for so many years, I would read articles and I would interview people and they'd be talking about how they were in denial for years and that they came to the realization that, you know, they just have to live with it and that they learn to manage it. And that's not what you want to hear when you're first diagnosed with psoriasis. You don't want, you totally disregard the people who say, oh yeah, no, you have to live with it, but just manage it and it'll be fine. You're going, no, I don't want to live with it. I refuse to believe I have to live with it. Surely there's a cure out there. I was fighting with my psoriasis. You know, it's as if the two of us had the shields up and I was going, I'm not changing my stance, you're going. And the psoriasis was saying the same to me. It was going, well, I'm not going anywhere. But I just didn't get it. I just didn't cop for years that if we worked together, we could get somewhere. Instead, I was forcing these treatments on it, not paying attention to how my psoriasis was reacting to those treatments. And therefore, I was just throwing any old treatment that someone told me would work on it. So it's taken me a long time to get to where I am now. Did I come out of it with what I thought going into it I would get out of it? No. I did not find a cure to psoriasis, but I came out of that documentary, of that experience, with something far greater. I came out of it with an understanding of my condition. And more importantly, I started to accept it. And that's when everything changed for me, when I started to accept my condition and I had a greater understanding of it. I came out of that documentary knowing why psoriasis existed in my body and how to effectively treat it. And because of that, it's as if I was at peace with it. Till next week. For more information on this topic, check out Itching to Tell You on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And tune in weekly for new episodes. Like, comment, and subscribe.